Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Type Make You Loco channel. Today we're gonna show you how to undercoat your Ford vehicle yourself using a little kit like this right here, an all-inclusive do-yourselfer kit that has the applicator gun, extra bottles, um, wands, and of course the product. Now the ideal time of year to apply an undercoating to your vehicle is in late summer in the fall, okay? Any time before uh, the, the snow and the slush and the ice and the salt and the brine and sand, all that stuff starts to fly. That's when your vehicle just gets coated underneath and it's kind of hard to undercoat it and keep that stuff out when it's already adhered itself to every little nook and cranny under your vehicle. So by the end of summer, usually all that stuff's washed out, I hope by then, uh, and it's a good time to apply it while it's clean and dry out. Now there's a couple different products out there to undercoat your vehicle. Back in the old days, they used to use old engine oil, used engine oil. They put it in a sprayer and they spray the frames and everything else. Uh, they use ATF, bar and chain oil, because it's a little bit thicker, I guess. I never used it. Uh, they mix it all together in these concoctions and they spray it on their frames, okay? Then there's, there's companies like Z-Bart and stuff like that that put on these rubberized undercoatings. But the problem with those is that a lot of times they trap moisture behind there so there's any rust that's starting already or um, it lifts a little bit and gets moisture behind there, it can cause new rust or if rust is already there, uh, that's small and slight, you know, really light rust, it'll actually accelerate it and you don't wanna do that. So rubberized undercoatings are kind of a thing of the past. Uh, the other option is Crown. Crown out, is out there and they spray this stuff on professionally. And then of course there's do-it-yourselfer kits like Fluid Film. Uh, the problem with Fluid Film though, it's a great product, it's lanolin based, uh, it's self-healing, all that good stuff. It's basically wool grease, okay? It's too thin for you to be used as an undercoating. It can be used for everything else, latches, all this other cut stuff, you know, inside doors, all that good stuff, but it, it, it's really not thick enough to be used as an undercoating. Think about it, during the winter, all the slush and slop underneath there gets, it hits your frame and everything, car washes you go through. Uh, it's a lot hitting the frame and this stuff just gonna kind of wash off real quick. So I did some research and the other product that I guess is newer to the market is called Wool Wax. Now the nice thing about Wool Wax is it, is it doesn't have the smell of fluid film. If you guys ever use this stuff before, you know it has a really strong smell that stays with the vehicle. I sprayed a couple areas on my, my truck here months ago and I could still smell it in the shop here. And that's just a little area, so imagine undercoating your vehicle. It smells like an old garage type smell. Um, so the wool wax has, doesn't have that smell. So wool wax also is thicker, so it'll actually stay on there throughout the winter. Um, and also you can get a tinted black. So usually the fluid film and the regular version of wool wax is like this straw color that kind of goes on clear. Uh, whereas I purchased the one with uh, that tinted black, so you spray it on, it's almost like a glossy paint you sprayed on your frame and it makes it look real nice. Now the great part about both these products is that they're lanolin based, it's, it's cheap grease basically, is that it's, it's self healing and it's supposed to allow the frame to breathe. So if there's any moisture, anything that gets caught behind there can breathe out of there. It doesn't trap moisture, but it also protects the frame, and the, the, the surface rust and stuff like that from uh, moisture and air getting in and accelerating the rust. So it kind of slows down or almost stops the rust because it's kind of suffocating what it needs to grow and expand, okay? So the, the, both these products, they're, you know, they're, they're non-hazardous, non-toxic, um, and they're, they're, they're great because they actually creep into all those different areas inside of there too. It's just the wool wax is thicker and better to be used as an undercoating. So today we're gonna go through the process, the basics of how to undercoat your vehicle. And we're gonna go through and show you a lot of tips and tricks that a lot of other channels out there uh, do not show. Stuff that should be noted and you should know before you actually start this process. Now this is an annual application. So again, in fall, you wanna apply this every year, but the wool wax, uh, ideally, that's what they say, it's gonna last through the winter season. You don't need it during spring and summer, and then you let the whole system just dry out, and you're gonna reapply in fall and make your truck or car uh, last a long, long time. It's, it's a maintenance item, just like maintaining fluids in your vehicle to make the vehicle last three, five, 10 times longer if you actually maintain it. Uh, so without any more yakking, let's go over the kit real quick to give you a general idea, and then we'll get started with tips and tricks and then the application. 
All right, so here is the pro kit that I bought straight from Kelsport, which makes the wool wax. I bought a five gallon bucket of the black tinted wool wax. Um, this will take care of about three different vehicles, three pickup size vehicles. They also include an aerosol can, the clear, and then an extension straw, which also has a 360 tip on it. And this is nice and small to get inside your doors and get a spray down in the, the flange down in there where they always like to rot. You want to get that down in there, just soak it in there, and it'll kind of creep out and protect everything. Of course, you get these extra jugs here for quick loads onto your application gun, so you screw them on because this stuff is so thick, it's going to take a while to fill each one of these. So if you fill all three of them, have them ready to go, you can just keep grabbing them, grabbing them, grabbing them, and just keep going and get the vehicle done so you don't miss any areas. So this is the applicator gun, the pro gun, and it's, it's solid, it's sturdy. It's a really nice little unit on here. Uh, I bought the regulator and the gauge on there because they want it 75 to 90 PSI. Uh, for best applications they do include instructions with it and then i also bought the um these these extensions right here which are really nice for getting inside the frame so this one right here is a straight extension uh, for just shooting underneath there in hard to reach areas then we have this other one right here which is about uh, probably 18 inches you can see it has a 360 tip on there so it comes out in all directions and out the tip on there and then this next one's probably 24, and this one's a straight shot, which is nice for certain areas, uh, depending on your application. And then there's a super long one here. It's probably 36 inches long, and this one's also a 360. These ones are really nice for getting deep in a frame and coating the inside of the frame where these box frames rot out. You want to get in there and just soak them. A couple other items that I picked up that are very important. You may want to have a suit on you. Uh, so you don't get all the stuff kind of misting down on top of your clothes and your hair and everything. Um, a respirator, of course. It's non-toxic, non-hazardous. But there's going to be some kind of a mist in the air. Now, the other great thing about the wool wax, because it's thicker, there's not as much of a mist in the air. It's not as thin as the, the fluid film. So you'll get less overspray with the wool wax also, besides no smell and everything else like that and lasting longer. I am pulling off the, the, the tires and getting in there deep in the wheel wells where everything rots out. So what we're going to do is we're going to get some basic black uh, trash bags here and just wrap the rotors and the calipers and all that and drawstring it. And then we can get in there and spray and not worry about one thing. Also, again, because there's going to be some overspray on the floor, I bought this one from Home Depot, 10 by 25. It's absolutely perfect for underneath the vehicle. And also, it can get on top of the vehicle, like on the windshield, and be hard to get off smearing and all that. So it's a good idea to get another one of these and put it on top of the vehicle, especially the windshield, to keep it covered. So that's the basic gist of it. I need to start getting this stuff filled up uh, so I can get these wands on there and start showing you how to do it. All right, so the first thing you want to do is take your product from your five-gallon pail or one-gallon pail and start putting it into these applicator bottles. We're going to fill them all up, and then we're going to cap them and put them into a warm water bath so that it thins the product. That way they spray out much faster and much more evenly too. Okay, so it's, a, it's going to be a chore to get this stuff into there. Um, I figured maybe there you can buy a lid with a spout on it and kind of hold it over the funnel. Um, but it, either way, it's going to be a pain because this stuff is heavy. So let's go ahead and open it up, and we'll show you guys what it looks like. It looks like a... Uh, tub of tar basically but the smell is barely there it smells like a household cleaner maybe uh, it's not strong at all uh, it, it smells pleasant um, so it should be good to go once we apply it to the vehicle so the, the best way I figured for this to do this is to use you know some kind of a scoop or a cup like this scoop it into there pour it into here and let it flow okay it looks like tar, but if you get it on the ground, or whatever, you're just gonna wipe it up. It's just grease, okay? So it's not that bad at all if there's any kind of overspill. So let's go ahead and try this out. You know, you're gonna be, it's gonna be slippery. <laughs> Make sure you have gloves on either way. I mean, you don't want this stuff all over you. And then we're just gonna pour it right into the funnel. You know, I guess a scoop be even better so you're not getting the back side of it here uh, full when you're scooping it out of here and it's going to kind of drip all over either way it's going to be a freaking mess 
but you probably got to fill this funnel, what, twice, three times, and it's full. These bottles are full. So I got to watch it right now. It's almost full already. You got to have room for your applicator in there. Yeah, so just like that, you know, just get them nice and full, and then we can go ahead and put them into that warm water bath. All right, now that our bottles are sitting in their hot water jacuzzi, chilling, look at him, he's kicking back, we can go ahead and concentrate on prepping the vehicle. So the very first thing you wanna do to do the most complete, uh, comprehensive job is to pull off the wheels and tires all the way around. This allows you to get deep up inside the wheel wells here with your body and kind of contort and get up inside here, get all these crevices, especially the lip over here that rots out on all of these. So that'll allow you much better access. I think leaving the wheels on is just plain lazy, uh, especially for a first application like this. You want to get deep up inside of there and really see what you're doing. The other thing you want to do, especially on trucks or or stuff like this is to get off all the, the underbody shields or skid plates like you see here. That's really gonna restrict your access to all these areas underneath here, especially the front cradle right here. You wanna get it nice and coated. And the same thing like back here is another skid plate for the transfer case. Get that stuff out of here, a few bolts and they come right down. Just watch out because they're heavy and they come down right on top of you there. So um, the other thing that I'm doing, because it's the first application, the vehicle's 15 years old, is I pulled off the uh, plastic wheel well liners from inside of here, a couple screws, and they pop right out. And it gives you access to all these crevices behind the headlamps here, up inside of here, okay? Look at all this access up inside of here. The lip on here, all the way up in there in the fender, and back here, look at all right here where it meets the firewall. And then look at stuff like this. Yeah, this stuff right here. It's really nasty to packs in here all the time. And it can pack in different areas, but on the F-150, it packs in right here. Look at that. That's all organic material from 15 years. So you want to get this stuff out of here. Look at it all. And then it holds moisture and just rots everything out. You'll see it right here, how it's starting to get, get to it. Yeah. Uh, so you want to get that stuff out of here, number one, and then you want to get a good coating inside that protect it because this stuff's going to pack in here again, guaranteed. Same thing applies. You can see my frame on here. It looks pretty good. That's real light surface rust. Nothing's popping. Rust in the welds, surface rust, surface rust. Looks beautiful, okay? Looks just fine. It's nice and solid. So what you want to do is go along and kind of wire brush different areas that you think are really heavy in the rust. Like I might get it right here in the weld, wire brush it and get the flakies off there. Um, and then especially back here on the cross members of the bed on here, there's a lot of peeling and popping on here. So let's go through with a scraper on there and just get all the big stuff off so we can spray directly onto the metal and protect it. And uh, it also seeps into the metal too. It kind of adheres to all the crevices in there and it will attach itself to the, the base core metal. So we're gonna be getting all up inside of here. So in these channels like this, or even inside of the frame here, what I'm gonna do is, is um, get an air wand up in here. You can kind of jab a little bit with it, but you can also, uh, the air pressure coming out of there will blow a lot of these flakes off inside the channels. Uh, that you can't get to otherwise. All this stuff is just basic good prep work uh, to make sure we're applying it directly to the body and uh, the, the light rusty surface like this so we can get in there and protect it, you know? Spots like this back here, it's not bad, but guess what? You get this off of here and we can get to the actual metal. You know, stuff like that, and then it can adhere directly to it. So start doing that, you know, don't, don't take too long on it, uh, but we're just trying to do the most uh, complete application possible uh, when we're doing this. Back up top here, there's a couple more items you wanna prep uh, before you just start shooting the undercoating. And like I said earlier, you wanna cover your windshield in case there's any kind of overspray or mist in the air because it'll make the window smeary and then it's hard to get off as far as cleaning it perfect and you don't want the sun rays coming through there and affecting your ability to drive. So just cover it up and avoid it altogether to begin with. 
The other thing that I did is I pulled off the headlamps. And older vehicles, just a couple bolts and they come right out. And the newer ones, you got to pull the whole bumper cover off and everything else. Probably not worth it. Uh, but it does give you a lot of access to the cavities behind here. Uh, to spray everything. Just imagine everything hits the front of the vehicle, okay? Like the horn behind there was starting to corrode on the connections and all that. So I cleaned all that up and protected it on both sides. Again, down below, you want to grab your plastic and just roll it out, and that'll catch any kind of overspray and make cleanup much easier. Back here on the pickups, uh, it's a really good idea. It only takes a couple minutes to pull down your tailgate and pull off your access panel here. It's a huge access panel on most of them, and it's just a few screws pops up, and you have access to the whole inside. You can just flood it with the undercoating and protect it. Remember, everything gets kicked up back here, so it's really getting hit back here, not to mention you can get deep down inside of here and stuff like that and protect it. It's just going to get sprayed like crazy. Same thing with the tail lights. I mean, it's like two screws, and then you yank on them, and they pull out, and it allows access to all kinds of areas inside the bed here to protect it, you know, so we don't have any rot issues going forward. Keep the truck like this, like new. That's the whole idea here. All right, so at this point, I'm going to start prepping the vehicle, get it ready, and then we'll give the uh, undercoating bottles another bath, and we should be ready to start shooting here. All right, so one hour later of air hose time, and wow, look what I got out of this vehicle. I mean, that's a lot. Um, I just went in here and all these different cavities with the air hose and got all the dirt and rust and paint chips and everything else flaking off. Got it in everywhere that I could. And you can see all the actual rust on here is exposed now so we can get that direct application of the undercoating so we can kind of uh, almost like nourish the metal. Uh, it'll get seep into it, and then it'll also cover it so we get keep that water and uh, salt and brine and air uh, from attacking it and causing more rust, causing it to spread. So you can see it's all pretty clean here and exposed so we can get that direct application on there all the way down. Now, the way we're going to do this is that you what you want to do is get in all those tight areas like these supports right here. You're gonna stick your air wand in there and the cross up tube right here, here. All those tight areas, we're gonna get in all the tight areas and get them all taken care of. Um, you know, up in here, um, don't forget above your wheel wells. Yeah, they start to get up in there and start trapping water and causing all that. So we're getting all these tight areas up in here, up in here, you know, everything with our 360 wands don't forget your hitch whoop right down in there if your end tubes are open on there you really want to take care of that this one's in really good shape um we're going to take care of all those those inaccessible error areas first all those hard to reach areas first let's just say uh, and then we're going to start doing the broad spraying the bed the tubes from the outside and all that uh, but at first you want to get in all these tight areas so you know that you've got them fully covered before you just start going hog wild underneath here. So, if things prepped best we can, let's get to it. All right guys, you ready for it? This is the messy part. So I have my safety glasses on, basic respirator for the, the uh, vapors that are gonna be in the air, you know, the fine mist. And then of course we have our gun fully set up. We have our regulator set to about 90 PSI on here. I'm using the uh, flexible extension with the straight uh, shot out the end here. And we're gonna start getting in all the tight areas first. Then we'll do the cross beams and tubes and all that stuff. And the frame uh, with the 360 wand, okay? Plastics down, this is how it's gonna look. Make sure your wool wax bottles are warm, else it will not come out very easily. So let's get to it. It's gonna be a long process. All right, so this right here in this corner right here, get my light going. This corner right here would be a perfect example where you want to use a straight wand that's flexible, okay? Now, 
Now this stuff, uh, you wanna of course not spray all over your wire harnesses and stuff like that. There's no need for it of course, and it's just make a mess. You also wanna avoid any kind of rubber. Uh, most rubbers on the vehicles are, are you know, oil and, and resistant, uh, but some of them it's questionable. So you just wanna avoid any kind of rubber. If you get it on there, just wipe it off. It's not tar, so it, it'll come right off and, and go from there, but see, You just want to take your time and get in all the crevices. So it looks a little something like that. And you can look at different angles and see where you missed it. You know, this stuff's black on, on this mix. So uh, you could definitely see where it's at or not. There it is. So that's, that's the basic idea. It looks like tar, but it's not. Uh, it's just like this grease that's going on there. And it will creep into areas that you missed, you know, in areas you can't, you can't access, you know. Another area right here, look at this right here, next to this connector, you can get way up in here with this flexible one. Next to it. And get it all taken care of. That's the kind of stuff we're gonna do at first. We're gonna get all these corners and crevices and stuff like that. Even stuff like this around this room. You know, um, and we'll just take care of all that stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of work, uh, but this is the most critical point right here. We did all that prep work for a reason. We wanna get in there and get all to all the accessible uh, areas right now, and then we can just have fun later on, just letting it go. Uh, so let's get to it. All right, at this point, I've probably undercoated two thirds of the truck. So I figured I'd take a little break and show you guys my progress so far, along with a lot of tips and tricks, a lot of things I learned uh, spending a few hours on this thing so far, spraying it in all the nooks and crannies. So the very first thing I'm gonna say is that this eight to $10 plastic film was totally worth it. Look at all the overspray on here, okay? The wool wax is thicker, so you don't get a lot of misting that's gonna travel in the air, but it's definitely gonna drop overspray just like anything else when you apply it. As far as the applicator gun itself, I'm still using around 85 PSI. Of course, warming the bottles in the hot water bath makes it a lot easier and faster. But as far as the application wand, I've only used this two foot flexible wand so far the whole time. I haven't used any other wand so far. Eventually we'll switch over to the 360 flexible wand, but right now I've only used this two foot flexible with a straight shot out the end for everything. It gets in everywhere uh, except for the cross members in the frame. So that's my tip to you. Start out with that wand on there. Let's talk about, uh, well, the compressor. The compressor, it's going to get a workout. Trust me, I have this big, big old uh, two-stage compressor here, 60 gallons, and this thing's on every three minutes, it seems. So uh, it's definitely going to get a workout. Make sure you have a decent-sized compressor and uh, tank on there. As far as PPE gear, personal protective equipment, uh, it's a good idea to wear clothes you don't care about, of course. A sweatshirt is a good idea, so you have long sleeves, covers you up. I'm using a welding hood like this right here to kind of, kind of comes close around my eyes and nose, okay? It protects everything else uh, from the overspray anyways. Of course, a basic respirator was a really good idea. I mean, look at all the stuff that's hit me so far. Um, glasses for sure for sure these are clean right now from last night um but these had splatters all over them the headlamp the headlamp is invaluable this thing is unbelievable any good hood headlamp will do uh i purchased the milwaukee one because i could use it for other stuff it's about 60 some bucks and this thing is ultra ultra bright so wherever you look you'll have lights and it makes the job so much easier all right, so let's take a look at the progress so far. We'll come back here and I'll show you a lot of things that I've learned so far and a few tips and tricks. 
So as you can see, you're looking around back here. It looks beautiful, right? I mean, everything, it looks really nice and coated and beautiful. Uh, but it takes a lot of work, especially in the bed back here with all these extra frame members and these cross members in the uh, bed back here. It's a lot. It's probably three to five hours back here. Uh, this is a first application. You're spraying on the black, so you're going to spray it thicker so it takes longer because um, you want it to be thick enough to turn everything black. Where it's clear, you'll see it shiny, and you'll probably move on, okay? But it does look really, really nice back here. The other thing I want to tell you is that when you're spraying cavities like this one right here, up in here, kind of spray this cavity, you want to spray it from all directions. Trust me. Look at from here, here, maybe from here, 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 here. And you want to get in all these different areas inside of there because you'd be surprised. You look at it from a different angle and you've missed something. So that's why it's taken me so long back here. I'm very detail oriented. Um, so you want to get everything really well back. I keep going over to St. Mary's and finding stuff. So the other thing I want to talk about is areas like this right here. Of course, this is the back corner right here. You want to concentrate on any areas, especially lower areas, uh, like this right here, where there's all these wells and places for the salt and muck to get in there and hide. So you can see I sprayed it really, really well, okay? And I'll probably spray up further in there. See those little welds right there? A little bit of rust on them. No big deal. But think about it. I was looking at these. This is the quarter panel of the bed back here. I mean, look at it. It's, it's, it's 15 years and it's basically rust free. It's so high up in there. There's not a lot of welds. There's not a lot of overlapping pieces of metal. Uh, so it's not an issue. So do we really need to spend another gallon of, of wool wax up inside of there? Probably not. So what I'm going to do, especially for this first application because it's taking so long, is I'm just going to concentrate in the lower portions where everything gets trapped, where everything is subject to all the stuff on the road. So over here, I'm going to do all these corners and everything, but I'm going to stop right here. Get in these corners really well and then come down and get this really well, okay? Of course, in the wheel wells, you do want to go up where this flange meets the bedside. You can see up in there, I'm starting to have a, some water tracked up in there. So I'm going to get some of that foam out of the way and then we're going to douse it in this stuff, okay? But you can see further up, it's like brand new, 15-year-old truck in the salt belt of America. I do need to do the wheel wells yet. You can see I have some rust starting there, same area. That's from that foam, collecting all the brine and the salt and, and muck and all that stuff. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is like fuel lines and, and connections and all that stuff. You want to avoid harnesses. You want to avoid any kind of fuel lines like this. You get a little overspray on, no big deal. But you don't want to soak those lines, especially those connections and everything. So with that, that straight shot uh, sprayer on there, you can like shoot up behind these harnesses where they attach to the frames. They shoot, shoot, and it kind of gets behind there. It pushes its way past. The other thing, like I said earlier, you want to avoid rubber lines, any kind of rubber on the vehicle. So, of course, brake hoses, avoid them. But all these... Um, like this crimp right here, these like to rot and split and then you lose your hose. Uh, so I'll spray those and of course the other side, it's all metal, uh, stuff like that to protect those so they come free uh, later on. Um, so yeah, besides that, you know, I mean, it looks beautiful underneath there, right? And again, up inside of here in these certain areas, I see a tank's protecting it. Look at it, it's like new. You see how far I've gotten up in there? Look at the original body panels, like new. So you don't need to go hog wild. You wanna concentrate on items like this right here. You see this cross member, we need to get that. This stuff, maybe you need to go a little bit further, but not, not worry about it too much. The same thing back here with the back of the cab. I'm gonna hit that flange right there. See, I hit the flange right here. Got it really good, top and bottom, but I'm not going any further up. I mean, you got to realize where all this stuff is collecting. And where it's collecting is down where, let's see, this side I did not uh, spray yet. It's collecting down at the bottom. So concentrate where everything is coming down to the bottom. Okay, you can see why right here. And where, where different pieces of metal are welded together. That's where they're going to trap stuff, and that's where this is going to happen. Okay. 
See, same thing right there, okay? And I think this side's done already, pretty much. I mean, you can see it's just absolutely coated on this side in here. So we're gonna continue all this, and then we're gonna start concentrating on, you know, the frame, uh, because the inside of the frame, especially at the bottom, uh, likes to collect water inside of here and rot out. So I wanna avoid that. So when we bust the 360 wand out, we're gonna do the frame. We're gonna do these cross members, get inside of there, all the bed cross members, and then we're gonna start popping body plugs underneath here. You see them right here? They're all over the place, okay? And we're gonna start inserting that 360 wand. You don't wanna spray it on any exhaust components. Obviously, if they get too hot, it's gonna burn off anyways. I put it on the rear diff, but of course you don't wanna spray it on the pinion flange or the drive shaft. They say you can put it on a drive shaft. I'd be surprised if this stuff would actually stay on the drive shaft. This is a new drive shaft on here. You can see it has some surface rust on here already. What I'm gonna do is take a rag, just soak WD-40 and just like nourish the metal and that'll be good enough. I've never seen a dry shit that he split in half from rust and I've seen some really bad ones. And the other thing is powertrain components. You don't need to spray them. Don't spray them. All this stuff needs to stay just the way it is. Connections for fuel filters, stuff like that. Fuel filters, anything like that, don't spray them. Um, Again, cats and all that stuff, avoid them. Drive shafts, avoid them. The front axle on here is aluminum. Don't need to spray it, okay? Oil pan, don't spray it. Block, don't spray it. Transmission, don't spray it, okay? And when they have these big tunnels up in here with these uh, insulation mats, great, don't worry about it. Believe me, nothing's ever rotted up in one of these, okay? It's everything down below. So that you'll see, you know, that, that's why the back end of the vehicle's taken so long. This stuff, I'm gonna spray a frame and keep going. I'm not even spraying any of this in the body. So you see how much faster it's gonna go up front here? But you really need to concentrate in areas like this. You see where everything gets collected? All goes through right here, sits there, and rots it out. And then of course this tire right here is flinging everything. That's the inside I gotta spray, yes. Yeah, so we're really gonna soak all this up in here. But again, a light coating up in these wheel wells, further up where the plastic protects it, is gonna be just fine. All this rust you see right here, on up to that hole, is from battery acid, eating away at it. It's not actual rust from salt and all that stuff. Uh, so the reason I took the wheel well liner off, though, we saw earlier, is because it collects everything in here. And you wanna really protect that. Get all that debris out of there. So once you get the back end done, you'll see the front end takes much longer. Again, like on this truck, they have aluminum lower control arms, don't need to touch them. Any of this stuff, you don't need to spray, okay? Concentrate in the frame, sure. You can see it has some fluid filling up here already. I gotta spray this part of the frame. And we're just gonna cruise up front here, but back in the back, it's gonna take a long time. Spray that so your hooks are good for the future in case you ever need to get pulled out of a ditch. But otherwise, the front here is going to go real quick. So those are the tips and tricks that I can give you so far uh, been, since I've been working on this. Um, avoid electrical connections and all that stuff. You really don't want to have to deal with any of that stuff later on down the road. It's just going to get in there and cause problems, okay? So I'm going to get back to it. And then when I start shooting inside the frame, uh, we'll come back to it. And I'll show you my tips for that and a little video of the inside of the frame and how important it is to make multiple passes to get it done. All right, now when you're taking care of any of these cross members here or inside the frame holes there, or even inside the bed right here, these supports right here, what you wanna do is take your 360 wand, put it all the way in there and then spray. And you wanna kinda wiggle it around a little bit in there, maybe move like this because it won't sit perfectly centered inside there. You have no control over it. And it's gonna take quite a few passes to get in there and get it really nice and coated. So what you wanna do is something like this. You can hear it hitting different areas inside of there as the end of the wand moves around. We're gonna move it around and slowly pull it back out of there. If you can, like in this scenario, 
I can move it with my hand and kind of get that 360 action going on. And slowly pull it back. That's very, very important. Now I found on the outer edges right here, and as far as you can see, let's say in the frames there, or any of these other uh, cross members up here, it's best to use a straight flexible uh, wand on there and just kind of get all the areas you can with it because it coats it much better. You know, get all these different areas. And that way it has a really nice coat on the inside there. Again, this is only our first coat, so it's gonna take you know, quite a few times to do this before you actually just saturate the inside there because the 360, since it's spraying out in all directions, uh, it's not spraying as much in all those directions. Um, so it's going to take quite a few passes inside of there. Let's cut to another truck that I did this on uh, for demonstration purposes where I show you how many, why it's so important to make multiple passes inside of here and to move it around because it's not going to coat so well uh, with that 360 sprayer. Let's take a look. Here's another F-150 06 that the rust, you know, has already gotten a hold of it and just, it's just like a cancer. It spreads everywhere. So there's big chunks missing here in the rockers and stuff like that, but it offers us a unique perspective to show you how that air wand works when it goes inside of a cavity like this and then you pull it back and how important it is to move it around there a little bit and then pull back slow, maybe do it a couple of times. You'll see it doesn't cover in one full pass on there. So of course, just like anything else, you wanna get up in here and pull the body plugs out um, with your cat claw, just kinda of pop them out and that'll allow us access to get that air wand inside of there, uh, the applicator wand and then we'll be able to see inside of here exactly what's going on. You can see there's nothing inside of there right now, just, you know, prime body. So we'll be able to show you how well it does or does not coat on a first pass. All right, here we go. We're gonna stick it in through the access plug right here. What you wanna do is you wanna get it all the way inside of there, all the way inside the cavity as far as you can go, okay? Da, 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 Max, I mean, this thing's really long, it's like 36, and we're gonna hit it. Let's take a look inside that rocker and see how well we did. So I'm gonna get you deep up inside of here and give you guys a better view. So as you can see up inside of here, uh, it takes quite a few passes to get it nice and coated inside of there. Um, you wanna move it around a little bit, back and forth, nice and slow, and get a nice good coating inside of there, especially if it's your first coating on this, uh, like you see here. Now, the nice thing about this lanolin stuff is that it will creep, so it doesn't just sit there. It kind of moves in all the crevices, 
and uh, takes care of everything inside of here. So this is the first application. After you know a couple of years of doing this, it'll just get a nice build up, a nice coating inside of there. And also heating up your bottles in like a bath of hot water will make the wool wax thinner for application, uh, which will give it a much more aggressive spray pattern on there where a lot more is coming out at once and you get a better pass on there. But that's the basic idea. You want, this is why it's important to go slow. You don't see or hear what's going on inside the frame or the rockers normally, but this is a, a you know a rare inside view of what's really going on inside of there. So keep that in mind when you're applying this uh, inside of you, like, like your frame rails and stuff like that, that are so common to just rot off from the inside. Do a nice good coating and utilize all these different holes on here. Don't just go from one all the way through. Use the different holes on here to get different areas. The nice part about this is any kind of overspray like that, the overspray got in my exhaust here, you just kind of take a rag and you polish, use it almost like a polish, and you wipe it off and it polishes everything up on here. Uh, same thing with my muffler under here, yeah. It's a polished, you know, stainless muffler, muffler anyway, it's, it was dirty, and uh, I went ahead and just wiped it up on there and it shined it up real nice. So what I'm gonna do, with the drive shaft is instead of using WD-40, I did a little bit of overspray on it on both sides. And then I use that rag and just kind of wipe it and nourish it into the drive shaft on there because mine's new and it's smooth. And I think I can nourish the metal that way, uh, the same way it's doing everything else on here. But yeah, look at it, I mean, it looks like new. Uh, so just finish up underneath here and then you can move on to the doors. Now, when it comes to the doors, they're equally important. Think about it. The weather strip on the outside is only designed to keep a certain amount of water out. It's not a perfect seal against the glass on there. That's why the doors include drains in them, because naturally you're going to get some kind of water in there. And with that comes mud and leaves and everything else. And of course, salt gets trapped right inside of here and just goes to town, starts rotting it out. Now, luckily, this truck is 15 years old. This guy took care of it, so my seams, my flanges down here are, like, new. I'm very, very lucky. So uh, what you want to do is look for any kind of body plugs. Usually, they're right about here, and you can get your air wand down inside of there, your sprayer wand, and you can start filling the cavity inside of there, okay? These are pretty big, so you can actually stick it up inside of here all the way down, stick it all the way down through there, and then slowly pull it back and fill that, that flange in there, okay? Looking inside the doors here also gives you access to other items like body plugs. See this plug right here? Be a good one to pop and get that wand down in there and get to these cab corners that like to rot off, especially on the uh, super crew cabs and regular cab models. The uh, super cabs like this, it's a little bit different design and they don't rot out as often, but believe me, it's a good idea to get in here and uh, pop that plug and fill that cavity as much as possible. Same way we did it down below by popping body plugs on the rockers, okay? Same idea. Now, because I'm changing speakers on this vehicle and I wanna give better demonstration of this process, I pulled the door panel off the passenger side here and you can kind of look down inside of here. Again, I'm very lucky they're very clean and rust free inside of here. So what I'm actually gonna do is pop door panels on all of these to change speakers and all that. And I'm gonna get down in here with the wand and spray and just fill it up inside of there. Um, but I'll also show the regular method with the can and the little air wand coming through here and how it looks above, okay? Now, like you see this side right here, that has the actual plug in it. You wanna pop that plug so we can get in there from both sides and with that air, that little air wand in there and spray and spray them good. And another thing to note, like I said before, look around where you're spraying. We sprayed down below really well, but still look at this right here. You can see down in there, part of that material that I pulled out and get you focused focused there you go you can see we have access from the top here to the back side where that rust was starting from all that organic material in the uh the wheel well so look around while the doors open if it might have access to other areas we couldn't even get to from down below 
So let's go ahead and get that air wand and we'll try it out in the door here. Here we go. So the very first thing I do, of course, you want to clean this flange best as possible. And then I use an air wand to get any kind of water or dirt out of this flange on here because these use an open flange and I'll even get inside it here. And kind of do it all along. I already took care of that earlier, but that's the general idea. And then you're gonna take your aerosol cans and we're gonna find a body plug right here, or in this case, the plugs, the drains are so huge down here, we can take the accessory cap, you can see it right here, and it has this 360 sprayer on the end of it, and we're simply gonna pop it onto the can, and then we're gonna feed it in to the cavity here, and it's very, very small, so it'll get in all these, these hard to reach areas, and just kind of go in as straight as possible, you can see mine's kind of trying to feed up there, Okay, and then you simply pop the nozzle off the can, make sure you shake it really well, and then we're going to pop it onto there, and uh, you just kind of do the same thing you were doing down below in the rockers like I showed earlier. All right, so there we go. So again, you want to get in nice and far, the best you can. Kind of get in there like that, and then you're just gonna hit it. Try to keep it straight, and pull back. And you can kind of see how it sprays out. It sprays out the end in like a 360 type pattern instead of uh, out in all directions, so watch. See how it kind of sprays on there? That's how this one sprays. And look at all that comes out of there. So it, it, the lock comes out really quick. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the clear wool wax spray, spray can that came in the kit. And once it's, it, it, it kind of settles like this, it'll just turn clear. Uh, that'll work for most paint jobs on there. It won't hurt the paint and like that. What I'm also gonna do, and again, initially it's gonna overload it. Since it sprays out the tip on there, nice and slow. And just go all the way along. This has an open flange design on here. So it's good to fit it down in there. And then also down inside of here, kind of get it from both sides. Let it settle before you just start wiping this stuff off. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's just gonna drip in place. Let it settle down on that channel, maybe hit it a second time, especially in these corrosion states like this, you want the best protection you can get. So I'll let it settle, let the air bubbles pop, and then uh, hit it again in that side of there. I don't want any issues. Yeah, kind of wash it with your sprayer. Because it comes out really fast. So you can kind of like throttle your trigger on here. So you get more of it in the seam and less spraying all over the place. Ooh, gooey stuff, huh? I mean, look at that. So these things work really well. Either the fluid film or the wool wax, either way. And you can see it's thin enough. It's creeping all those different areas in there. So I'm not worried about using fluid film instead because it's thinner. This stuff is creeping quite well. I mean, we're trying to get to the bottom of the flange here, not up here, okay? So yeah, that's the process. Again, let, it, let all the air bubbles pop, let it settle, and then you can wipe it and it'll kind of just polish your paint at that point, and the rest of it will sit in that groove in there. And that'll get, that'll get in there and protect the paint and the, and the base metal. If there's anything popped inside of there, it'll protect it and seal it, uh, to keep all the every, everything else out of there, the salt and the water and everything else. It'll protect it so these stay. This is a really common point of, of rust on Fords. I'm sure other brands too, but I know on a lot of Fords, it's really common. So if you can do something now, it'll save the entire door. The rest of the door, inside, everything, usually is okay. It's this freaking flange down here uh, that, that starts rotting out on these and causing a lot of problems. And last but not least, don't forget other areas like 
your lift gate hatch or your tailgate and your tail lamps on your vehicle because that's where everything gets kicked up in the back ultimately when you're driving down the road and it just gets covered back here and that's where it's going to rot the most so like the tailgate right here on uh, most Fords has a big old panel on here so it allows you lots of access in there it takes about well i don't know 30 seconds to take off it has t30 screws in it usually and they'll come right out Don't lose any. You know, once you pull it off of here, I mean, how long did that take? And now we have proper access down inside of here to get our wand down here, here. We can get all the way down to the flange down here. That's going to rot out on these um, all the way across. And then your linkage inside of here is a really good idea to spray your linkage here and the rods like to seize down there, then you could even use this stuff as, as a lubricant um, in the latches here. Same idea, uh, and it'll protect all that. See these seams seized all the time. So to spray it all while you're inside of here, especially down at the flange where everything gets kicked up and trapped in there. Tail light, same thing. It takes a few minutes, a few screws on there on most vehicles, especially the pickups, and then they pull right off of there, okay? And you look down inside here, you'll see we sprayed, uh, but we couldn't get all the way up inside of here and these other corners and stuff like that that you want to really get to uh, because, again, for everything gets kicked up inside of there. Same thing with the hood in the front. Think about it. The hood in the front, everything is hitting it head on. Um, so a lot of the Ford hoods are aluminum, uh, even the lift gates too, and there's a lot of corrosion problems. So if we can mitigate that in any way possible, by getting in there and spraying it, uh, it's, it's best to do that. You know, do a full, complete job instead of just spraying the frame and thinking you're good to go, you know? Um, so yeah, that's about it. I, wanted to, I just wanted to go over uh, my process and my take, my approach on undercoating a vehicle or, uh, you know, uh, spraying the um, corrosion, anti-corrosion spray in all these cavities and what to do and how to do it. Uh, based on my experience with these vehicles and where it really, really needs it. I'll link to all the products that I use down below uh, so you guys have a good reference there. Uh, and then you can kind of just try them out yourself, you know, and get in there and take care of your vehicle. Vehicles can last three, five, ten times longer if you maintain items like this and the fluids and all that good stuff, the engine, um, you know, and you can get the most you can out of your investment in the vehicle. Vehicles are not cheap nowadays, so you might as well maintain the one you have and enjoy it while you're driving it. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.